Hello everyone, this is Pioneer Park. It's a 44 acre park with a bunch of little museums and tourist shops and such like that. And I, I don't think we could have picked a more beautiful day to come. So we'll see what we see and um, hope you guys enjoy what I show you. Over and out. Okay, Pioneer Park. I'm gonna do a little panorama video. This place is so cool. I am thoroughly enjoying myself here. Now I'm going back to the Harding car because that place was really cool. Talk to you later. Here is the Harding car, made famous because William Harding used it to come and set foot in Alaska. Let's go inside and see what we see. Warren G. Harding was born November 2nd, 1865 and died August 2nd, 1923. I know dates are kind of boring, but this is important because it was July 1923 when he rode the Denali car or the Harding car up to Alaska. Okay, here's a little bit I'm reading from whitehousehistory.org about Warren Harding's trip. In June 1923, Warren Harding embarked on an ambitious journey across the United States. It was called the Voyage of Understanding. Historic trip included the first visit of a sitting president to the U.S. territory of Alaska, as well as the first international visit of an American president to Canada. The voyage also marked the final weeks of Harding's life before because before he can go home back to Washington, he died suddenly from a heart attack August 2nd, 1923 in San Francisco. There's a light. I know it's something special, but here's something really cool. Light switch. It still works. Look at that. Yeah, I know. I get, I get excited easily. Okay. Turn it off. One last thing about the Harding car. My kids didn't think they were going to like looking inside of it, but once they got inside, they were just amazed at the quality of the woodwork inside and the light fixtures and th things like that from a car from 100 years ago. I think it was their favorite part of Pioneer Park. A little carousel came from Illinois and landed in Pioneer Park around 1978 according to the worker here. It's so cute. Look at the little horses. everyone just showing you around Pioneer Park and right here is the SS Nanana. It is a five deck stern wheel paddle ship. It was built or fabricated in Seattle but actually put together in Nanana, Alaska and then it launched in May 1933. It was used to push up to 300 tons of freight including two tons of cold storage which could be carried on her main deck. She could push five or six barges on the Yukon River, but, but because of sharp bends, she was only able to, the only one on the Tanana River. I'm about to cut that part off. So she was in use from 1933 to around 1955. Different sources um, have different ideas exactly when she stopped being in use, but it was around 1955. Uh, weather neglect and souvenir hunters damaged the Nana when she was stuck at the river, not having any, not doing anything. Um, and to protect, preserve her, 
they decided to move her to a permanent place in 1965. What they did was they ended up digging a big trench or canal or something like that and filled it up with water that way they can float her up to where she is sitting right now. This is what somebody in the Nana train station told us how she got to where she is now. And in 65, she was parked at a place called Alaska Land, which is now called Pioneer Park. And here you can see her. I'm also not sure if you can see um, in the video or a little clip there, there's a little black cleat hitch attached or cemented to the sidewalk there next to a park bench. It's real quick. You you, you have you, you blink if you and you miss it. I tripped over that and I ended up going head over heels kind of and catching myself on the park bench there and getting a little banged up. I still have the bruise. It's going away, but it was black and blue and purple for a couple of days. I'm all right now, but hey, it's a story to tell. For more information, look up the SS and Anana. Uh, I just read you some stuff from Wikipedia. The U.S. National Park Service has some information, and they said it was became a National Historic Landmark back in 1989. Um, the significance, according to the National Park Service, is that it's the only one of three steam-powered passenger stern wheelers of any kind left in the U.S. Take a look. It's really cool. While we were in Pioneer Park, we also visited the Tanana Valley Railroad Museum. This museum isn't very big, but there's a lot in it and it's very interesting. The highlight of this museum, or the main event, is seeing the original steam locomotive, which is named Engine Number 1. It was shipped to the area in 1905 by steamboat and barge to pioneer the first track in the States for the Tanana Mines Railroad which later became the Tanana Valley Railroad. The company has since melded with another and it became the part of the Alaska Railroad. It helped transport freights and passengers from Fairbanks to Seward. Engine number one is still fired up for special events and is stationed in the museum along with other early locomotive dubbed Old 67. Restoration workplaces is enclosed by glass and windows or glass windows, excuse me, to allow visitors to look at it and take a look at it. While I was there, I was able to speak with an older gentleman named Richard. He's in his 80s. He knows so much about the history of, the, of this locomotive and other parts of the museum. You have to listen really carefully because he's very soft-spoken, but he was very interesting to talk to. I do recommend that you go and look him up and just listen to the stories he has. He's quite a guy hey guys thanks for watching as always if you like this stuff subscribe thanks